Okay, so in this problem, uh, we are using heat of fusion or heat of vaporization to find the heat needed to melt or boil a substance. So let's look at what our substance is. It's acetic acid. We have 158 grams of acetic acid, and we are beginning from a temperature of 29.5 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I have here a little list of givens. And because this problem says calculate the amount of heat needed to boil 100 grams of acetic acid, Let's go ahead and also get the boiling point, boiling point of acetic acid, uh, which is 117.9 degrees Celsius. And then the melting point of acetic acid is 16.6 .6 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna use these values to figure out where we are, okay? So let's go to this chart. We're not doing water, we are doing acetic acid, okay? So we don't have water, right? We don't have water here, okay? No steam, no ice. And if this is the heating curve for acetic acid, where would the, what would the temperature here for this melting, this first phase change from solid to liquid be? 16.6 .6 degrees Celsius. So let's change this to 16.6, .6, not zero, okay? All right, and the boiling point, the phase change from liquid to gas, what is that? 117.9 degrees Celsius. So let's change this to 117.9, not 100, okay? So here we have liquid, right? Here we have gas. This is the boiling point. This is the melting point. And we have solid here, liquid, gas, okay? This is our first phase change from solid to liquid. This is our second phase change from liquid to gas. Let's look and see where we are so we know how many steps we're gonna have in this problem. We are starting a beginning temperature of 29.5 degrees Celsius. Where is that? Where's 29.5 degrees Celsius? It's somewhere in this region. So that tells me we are starting with liquid acetic acid, okay? It's above the melting point, but below the boiling point. So it's somewhere in here, in this area. We're starting here. Okay, this is our starting point. They want us to boil it. So, so they want us to boil all of this acetic acid. Okay, so that tells me this is going to be another two-step problem. Step one is going to be from going from wherever we are in this, in, in this part of the curve to the boiling point. And then step two is going to be boiling all of the acetic acid that we have. Okay, converting it all from liquid to gas, which at this point we have no more liquid. Okay, so step one, get it to the boiling point. Step two, convert all of the liquid to gas, and then we're done. It's just two step. Now, if they said you want to boil it and then take the gas to a certain temperature, then it would be three steps, but they didn't say that. They just said just boil it, need it to boil beginning at 29.5. All right, so another two-step problem. So step one. Here, this was different than the last example. Last example, step one, we started on the phase change, but here we're not. We're starting here in the heating. So I'm not going to use the, the heat of fusion. This is heat of fusion. And I'm not going to use the heat of vaporization yet. You only use the heat of vaporization or the heat of fusion when you are looking at energy required for a phase change. Right now, we're looking at this, okay? How much heat to go from here to here? We're gonna use the specific heat formula. Q is equal to M times specific heat times change in temperature. What's the mass of acetic acid? 158 grams. What's the specific, specific heat of acetic acid? 2.06 joules per gram times degrees Celsius, okay? 
And what is the change in temperature? Well, I'm starting at 29.5 degrees Celsius. I'm going to the boiling point, which is 117.9. So the change in temperature is 117.9 minus 29.5. And that is 88.4 degrees Celsius. So we're going to figure out times 88.4 degrees Celsius. We are going to figure out how much heat is required to raise 158 grams of acetic acid by 88.4 degrees Celsius. I'm going to raise it up by 88.4 degrees. This is the specific heat of acetic acid. So the amount of energy required to do that, if I check my units, grams cancels, Celsius cancels, I'm left with joules. The amount of energy or heat is uh, 28,772.4 joules, quite a lot, okay? We can convert this to kilojoules to make it a more manageable number if you want. 28.77 kilojoules, and I'll make that 772. All right, so we've gotten the energy requirement for that first step, but we're not just going from here to here. But once I have heated it to 117.9 degrees from 25, then I have to phase change it. So we need to figure out how much energy is required to phase change all of that acetic acid. And to do that, we're going to use now the molar heat of vaporization. Okay. So for step two, the amount of energy is equal to molar heat of vaporization times the number of moles. So what is the heat of vaporization? I have it here. 23.70 kilojoules per mole. That's given in Alex. You could also Google that. Times the number of moles of acetic acid. Uh-oh, I don't know how many moles I have. That's easy to find. I just convert from grams, 158 grams of acetic acid. If I look up the molar mass of acetic acid, I see that there are 60.052 grams of acetic acid in one mole. So 158 divided by 60.052 is 2.631 moles. So 2.631 moles of acetic acid applied by its heat of vaporization should give me the heat requirement to boil uh, 158 grams of acetic acid. And so Q here is 62.356. And what are my units? Moles goes away, kilojoules, okay? So to get the total amount of heat needed to do these two steps, I add them together. So uh, 62.356 plus 28.772 gives me a total heat requirement of 91, and we want three significant digits. So it's 91.128 uh, kilojoules. So let's round that 91.1 kilojoules. And that's my final answer.